Mr. Shanoas saw Trevor throw a brick through his lounge window. Mr. Shanoas was treated by his doctor for a cut he received, but was later able to identify Trevor when he was apprehended and arrested by the police. Trevor was charged at Ratman Street Police Station at 9.45 p.m. When asked if he had anything to say, he made no reply. Do you have any questions on the facts, Mr. Wyman? No questions. Thank you. Were you aware that Mr. Charbonnet had to be treated for a wound you inflicted upon him? Yeah. Stand up. You do not invite leniency, do you? No. <laughs> constant truant at school, a failure it seems. You've been before the court on numerous occasions for non-attendance. You have been convicted of taking and driving away, shoplifting, violent behaviour, and in spite of your undertakings to the court, you have made no attempts to secure yourself a job. And now you've been accused of stealing once again, and you've attacked a member of the immigrant community and caused damage to his property. It's a long, depressing list. Are you not ashamed of yourself? No. to the Upper Street Residential Assessment Centre. Residential means a place where you reside, live. You will reside, live at Upper Street for a period of six weeks, which means you'll probably end up in there for about six months, while a team of experts, psychiatrists and psychologists, team leaders, key workers, decide what they think should be done with you. That is called assessment. Then you go back in front of his nibs for nicking the cassettes from Arads. He reads the expert's reports and then sentences you to be hanged. You got that? What do I get for the cassettes? You don't listen, do you? You're all the bloody same. Today was the brick through the packy's window. They made a balls up. You've got to go back for the cassettes from Arads. That's when he'll decide what to do with you. In a bad mood, Harry. You think you get away with it? What? What? Nicking from Arads? Why not? Was it full of skinheads the day you went, was it? It's full of wogs. How many other skinheads did you see doing their weekly shop? It's full of wogs. Why not me? Wangers! You heard what he said. No more chances. Go back in front of him and he'll put you away. But looks like I'll the door down. It's not worth it, Trevor. They'll lock you up. They can't lock me up for not getting a job. Eh? Try him and see. You're still going to be my social worker, Harry. Yeah, I'm afraid so. I'm off the next two weeks, so behave yourself. Off work? Work. You're going on with the Harry? That's right. Where? Corfu. Where's that? Just stay straight till I get back. Put me in the filing cabinet, Harry. I can spend the next two weeks reading all the cobblers you write about me. Peter, this is Trevor. Hello, Trevor. Harry? Yes, sir. What can I do for you, Harry? Well, I brought Trevor. Bring in mean, this Trevor. Yeah, that's right, yeah. He's uh, case notes will be around later in the lorry. A slight confusion here, Harry. If you brought Trevor for admission? you just come from the call. I know nothing about this. It's a telephone referral. When? Four, five days ago. Oh, well, yes, sir. Uh, right there. How do you know I was coming four or five days ago? I didn't. I only went to court this morning. It's common procedure. Uh, come through, will you, Harry? Uh, you two, Trevor. See if we can't sort this out. Come on, ball brain. Find your place even if I have to pay for it. Harry, Trevor is a telephone referral, isn't he? Right. Hello, Peter Clive. Beep, 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 beep. Hello, Peter Clive. Terry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you're still here. No, nothing's planned. No, uh, Can you hold on to ticks, Terry? Yeah, good. Harry, your message isn't recorded in the log. Terry's not expected. Trevor. Not oh, Trevor. It makes things very difficult for us to sort out. It's impossible, I'd say, Peter. Yeah. Don't let it get to you, chum. Just remember that I left a care order around at the court. I can't admit him without a care order. When can I get down to Job Centre? Pardon? Where is it, anyway? Uh, just a tip. Terry, can I call you back? 
Hey, what brought this no, on? No, well, this place is full of yeah, wankers, Harry. I'd rather work than be here. Yeah, Look, Peter, can't we do something with Trevor? Like, send him off to get hanged, and then you and me can have a sort out. All right. I'll take you through and pass you on to someone else if you feel okay about that. You don't need me to hold your hand, do you? I'll get down the job centre as soon as possible, Harry. Right, Trevor, come through, will you? Back in two ticks, Harry. Put your steps, smart ass. Oh, Alex. What's this about the job centre, Trevor? Magistrate told me to get a bleeding job. I'm Peter Clive, one of two deputy superintendents. I'll link you up with your key worker, our house parent, if we can find them. You've seen a lot of them. They'll have filling your entry form with you, organise a room once we've got things sorted. We've got things going here like bike workshops, if you're interested, uh, evening groups, Red Rover days. Oh, we need to have a little conference with you about your contract. I don't like that bed, it's too near the window, there's a draft, I want that one. I'm in this bed. I know you are. You got a soft stick on you. I know I have. I said it to you. It's all this bollocks about a contract. That's Pete Clive, he makes you do it. They make you sign a contract. He's a wanker. Oh, he's a prick. You have to promise to behave, get a score on time, that sort of thing. Do it in your own right and right out and sign it. What school? I still go to my pop school. I've been suspended, so I'm back. So why aren't you there today? Oh, infection in my ear. My case conference comes up next week. Then I might get out of here. They're all wankers. Who? This lot here. Who hey, was that? Don't you know? No. Yeah, you can have this bit if you want. No, thanks. I'll stay over here. That's just for the bus. That's right. What about pocket money? You've only just got here. It's not been fixed yet. I don't know how much you're supposed to get. Same as everybody else. You have damages to pay, don't you? For the broken window. I need some pocket money. What for? If you're just going down to the job centre and back, you won't need any pocket money. You go straight there and back again. What if I don't make it back here for lunch? It won't take that long. If it was up to me, you wouldn't be going at all. They might send me for a job. an extra pound against your pocket money. Remember this?
Oi, what's this say? Supermarket, 23.55 per week. S, 50p an hour. Bollocks. Yeah. You ain't supposed to take the cards. You a carpenter? Required to train for three years as dental nurse. Should have knowledge of French and Spanish, but not essential. Yeah, who'd you have to suck off to get that one then? Right. Yeah, what's this one, son? MF, 9.35.30. A young person for general warehouse duties must be able to speak fluent Punjabi and Urdu. You speak Urdu? No. That's your chances then, doesn't it? Here. Wood veneer wall coverings. Candidate must read, be a good character, live in a home with parents in home environment. No criminal records, school records will be checked. I'll get a job from you. Yes, but you'll have to wait, dear. There's a queue. You get me a job, right? Yes, but you can't jump the queue. And you're supposed not to take the cards from the display. Do you think you could put them back for me? Tacky jobs, aren't they? Well, if you wait, perhaps we can sort something out. You got something useful I can do while I'm waiting for a job? I've got 10 O levels, 7 A levels, I speak fluent Punjabi and Chapati. You'll have to wait. I'll come back tomorrow. See ya. I'll doubt it. Where did you get all them? Down a scrapyard. What's this? Centre punch, automatic. You never seen one? No. Tea bar? What's that for? I'll show you. I'll take these. Get them in the centre. Hide them. Stick them up your ass. Don't lose them. We get nicked. Chuck them. Which one do you want? That one. Now get out. What? Get out. What for? I've been down the job centre, right? On the bus. We get back together, they'll suss us now. Get my keys, so you fucking walk. I'm going to see some mates.
Ça va Take it back. What? The car, Trevor. Take it back. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not bloody stupid. I saw you. You've nicked that bloody car, so take it back. I ain't nicked no car. I saw you get out of it. Now, I'm not blind or stupid. Now, take it back. Get rid of it. I'll get rid of it. But I ain't taking it back. Fine. But do just that. Come through, will you? And then we come back again. Go on, bloody good luck to you. Where is it? Where'd you put it? What? The bloody car, Trevor, the car. I'll give it to Ox family. He's in a ship walks back to Zulu land. Where is it? Please park in up Broadway Lane. Where's lunch? Why'd you take it? To get back to lunch. You were given money for a bus. I bought a car instead. You're not being clever, you know. When do I get lunch? You don't. You've missed lunch. It's too late. You what? The next time I have you down at the courtroom so fast, you wonder what happened. Great. It's your last chance. Get out. You had your lunch? Yeah. I ain't. Oi. Oi. I want my lunch. Oi! I want my lunch! Do you mind? There's no lunch. You know there's no lunch. We don't serve lunch at three in the afternoon. He's got his in there. He's got it. The dining room's closed. Get rid of this, shall we? 
Have we met? Thank you, Peter. Well, at least you can spell. Harry Parker, your social worker. I know Harry very well. He says you're bright, says you're worth a bit of bother. And take the time if I were you. Don't be clever, don't be smart. We've no time to waste. Get that. There's plenty of other kids we could be dealing with. If you really want to behave like a moron, we'll put you with all the other morons under lock and key at Hatchmere House. And I can do that. I'll have you transferred to a secure unit. We'll do your assessment from there. If you're going to stay here, let's make it clear. You're going to have to step into line. Not Just so. a sec. You're going to have to step into line and you're going to have to cooperate. Now, that shouldn't be too difficult. We're a reasonable lot. I'm not signing any contract. Well, let's look at that, shall we? Let's give your intelligence the benefit of the doubt. Mr Parker says you're a bright lad and I respect his opinion. So I have a particular interest in you. Personal. Between the two of us. I want you to prove to me you're worth all the time and effort that we're prepared to put into you. Your big break, this. Does not give you a second chance. All right. All right. Good. So let's take a look at what life's got in store for you. Go back a few steps, see just how clever you've been so far. For a kick-off, you've just been to court, haven't you? When was it? Thursday. Yesterday. Just yesterday you've been to court before, haven't you? Right. Right. Still being clever, still being smart. So what were the most important things that happened to you before you went to court? Can you remember that far back, eh? You started off here at home. H-O-M-E spells home. And there's your mum, your dad, all the rest of them. And just like any other mum and dad, all they ask you to do, all you have to do is to go to school. Now, that's not too much to ask, is it? You're clever, bright. Everybody wants you to succeed. Nobody wants a failure on their hands. Get the right qualifications, make your way in the world. But you didn't want to go to school, did you? You knew best. So you started bunking off, out the gate, over the fence. And your teachers are concerned, because they're there to help. They don't want to see you get behind. So they go and see your mum and dad. My teacher's ever been to my house. No matter. They talked to your mum and dad, didn't they? And they told you to get your ass back into school. They know you have to go. But you still didn't listen. Out the gate, over the fence. Before you know where you are, your mum and dad get a visit from the education welfare officer. Got a visit from him, didn't you? Yeah. That's right. Because the Ewo's there to make sure you go to school. If you don't, he gives the nod to the appropriate authority. And that spells trouble. Now, at this point, a lot of kids get a bit of sense. They get themselves together. They get back to school. They listen. But you didn't listen, did you? The education welfare officer visits four, five, six, even seven times, tries to help discover the problem. A lot of time and expense, and all because you don't want to go to school. The Ewo reaches his limit. So he sends your parents a letter threatening to take you to court for non-attendance. But well, that does nothing, absolutely nothing. So there's a summons. And you go for the very first time to court. Your debut. First appearance, send him home for a test attendance, for whatever good that'll do. You're supposed to go to school for 21 days straight. But you foul up after the third or fourth day and back you go again. So, one, two, three, four, five, six breaks. Six chances to get yourself straight, get your ass back into school, and one, two, three, four, five, six times you've blown it. Now, am I not right? Yeah. But you weren't just bunking off, were you? You had to do something with all that free time. So you did a bit of thieving. First two or three times you get caught, you get taken down the nick, and some policeman tells you off, shouts at you. Next time you get a caution. This time a sergeant in full uniform shouts at you. That doesn't make a damn bit of difference, because you're apparently deaf to any kind of reason. You go on nicking and making a general bloody nuisance of yourself, when you should be here learning something useful. But it's burglary, shoplifting, TDA, touching the dog's ass, taking and driving away. And back you go to court. They're getting to know you now. So you get fined or sent to the local police attendance centre. Kept off the streets all day Saturday, made to scrub floors by another loud policeman when you could be watching West Ham lose at home. The magistrates don't know what to do with you. They're all greengrocers and shopkeepers. So, they send you here to us. For... Assessment. So, what are we going to do with you? We could recommend you go home. What? But they won't have you. So, are we going to get rid of you? Foster parents? Never. Children's home? A joke. 
CAG Detention Centre, Borstal. Well, a pity about CAG, community home with education, appealing both to your intellectual brilliance and your public spirit. What used to be called an approved school, a CAG? You could have been king of the mafia. Lots of lick me ass power trips for ambitious young 15 year olds, and you've just turned 16, bad luck. Not much left to bring your line, is there? Short, sharp shock at the local detention centre, a Borstal. Two simple lessons you're going to have to learn, DC or Borstal. One, discipline. Two, respect for authority. You're going to have to learn it, so you might as well learn it now. This is an open invitation to you to cooperate, Trevor, for your own good. DC, seven out of ten coming out of detention centres, eight out of ten leaving Borstal's, re-offend, commit crimes, that is, within two years. So, here you are, fresh out of Borstal. What's the first thing you're going to need, Peter? A job. A job? Peter, how many unemployed do we have at the moment? Millions. Exactly. So what chance have you got with your spots and your record of getting a job against a lab with O and A levels and a decent haircut? About nil. Optimistic. So, no job. What do you do? Sign on the dole. How much is that worth to you? Place to live, food in your gut, a bit of fun, nothing is gone. Broke. No job. No prospects, no cash. So what do you do? And you're back here. And all because you were too damn stupid when you were here, nicking sweets from the local tuck shop. Well, they've tried all this. I know this didn't work, not with you. So what's left? And you're on the bandwagon, boy. And you won't get off. Prison, locked up like an animal. A job. No prospects. Dole. No cash. Thieving. No more chances. Prison. An animal. Round and round you go. Well, those are your options. You've created them. You've brought it all up on yourself. Before you kick another door down, before you kick another chef in the bollocks. Before you do anything. Think. You may not get another chance. Settle down, we'll have another little chat on Monday. Sounds great, when do I start? Doesn't have to be like that, Trevor. There are alternatives, there are brighter prospects. You look all the same, it's all first names with you. How do you feel about that, Trevor? You make out like you know me. I know some things about you, Trevor. Trevor? I know you're intelligent. It's all you report, you could do well. You say that like you're giving me a present. I'm not trying to be patronising, if that's what you think. Look, what do you expect me to be? Thick in the head the way you want me? Trevor. Trevor? You found your tongue now, the superintendent's gone. Bullocks. You can walk out of this room now. Me too. But you must behave responsibly. Grow up. No more violence, right? And you start using some of the intelligence you're supposed to have. That's right. Bollocks. Piss off. I hate you. The fucking pair of you. I hate you. I don't really know you, Trevor. You don't know me, so how can you hate me? For putting me in here. You put yourself in here. Trevor, look, sorry. You go kicking doors down, breaking the place up. I'm British! So? Well, do you know what that means, do you? I think so, yes. You're proud to be British, aren't you? What do you mean, Trevor? Don't you know? I'm proud. I don't really think about it like that, Trevor. That's because he spent too much time locked up in here with all these niggers. Oh, I see. British bulldog, one, two, three. I'm more British than you are, fuck face. You hate the blacks as much as I do, and you don't admit it. You hate the blacks more than I do, because they frighten you. That's why you lock them up. Watch your tongue. You lock up anything that frightens you. The only thing that frightens me, Trevor, are the people who put sick ideas like that into children's heads. Trevor, you're not in prison. This is not a prison. In here, it's just the same as school. Do what we tell you. Think what we tell you. Say what we tell you. Squawk. Be a fucking parrot. I hate you for putting me in here. You bullshitters. You swallow your own bollocks, you expect me to swallow it too. Blacks in here as thick as shit with no brains. You know it. Admit it. Be honest, I had to sit in school watch these wankers trying to add up on their fingers. I was held back. All the white kids were held back. I see, and that's why you spend your time attacking canteen managers, eh? It's all the fault of the blacks. Packies don't even speak fucking English. 
Or send them back. Now look, come on. There's nothing cruel in there. Be kind. Is that why you threw a brick through Mr. Whatever his name is window? Every packy's going to get a brick through his window. And shit, and piss and petrol. Wait till it starts. You're proud of all this, are you? I don't spend my life watching my P's and Q's because some mingy little fucker like you is going to write all down the piece of paper. Your case conference is coming up. What's your step? Bollocks! I'll say what I want to say. You've got decisions to make about my life. You get on with it. It's got bugger all to do with me. I hate you for putting me in here. One day you'll fucking pay for it. Trevor, we didn't put you in here. You did that. You put yourself in here. We are trying to get you out. Out where? Out of this room, out of this place, you know, back into the world. It's your fucking world, mate, not mine. You stick it up your ass. I don't want it. Come on, Peter, let's go and have a drink. So, Matt, can I take a bit of honesty? Well, now, I wouldn't have said that honesty was one of your finer points. Just a minute, can I say something? Trevor, just a minute, that's all. Let's just cool it, shall we? Well, this is a bad start. But there's no need for it to go on like this, no reason at all. And what you have to remember is, this is just a temporary situation. You could be out of here in no time. You're here for assessment, that's all. And what that means is that we would like to help you to help yourself. Now, it needn't be like that. There are alternatives. If it goes well, you could be out of here in three or four weeks. Through youth projects, you could travel, apprentice boarding schools, choose a trade, you can still study loads of things. It needn't be like that. I mean, while you're here, there's pocket money. If you want new clothes, you can have new clothes. The trip's planned. Christ, it's not as bad as you make it sound, but there has to be some kind of understanding between us. What are you looking at your watch? I wasn't looking at my watch. What were you doing? Count the ears in your arms. Hell, what you enjoy, Trevor? Horse riding, motorbike scrambling, canoeing. A lot better than sitting in this bloody room. Well, fucking. Oh yes, we do have a man. He comes around every Thursday to fuck some sense into selected individuals. Yeah, you on that one, are you? You two, please. Trevor, let's just concentrate on getting you out of here, out of this room. We can sort out the world tomorrow. I'm not signing any contract. You will forget about the contract. Forget about it. All it means is cooperation, and that's what's important. We must cooperate, because I'll tell you, if we don't sort out something, and soon, all that, all that bloody awful mess up there will be the only options left. There'll be no more help from us. Great. And you'll be a total bloody failure at 16, and it's such a bloody waste. I'm a success, mate. I'm a fucking star. Then why are you in here, Trevor? Hmm? There are those among us who'd like to know the answer to that, and from where I'm standing, it's not looking too good. I'm in exactly the right place at the right time. The fact that you're too fucking thick or stupid to see that, that marks you down. You'll be put up against a bus covered in petrol and shot. And All of you, it's you that's fucking failed. I'm not your bleeding problem or anyone's bleeding problem. Bollocks to you in your report. Write it, lock me up, who gives a fuck? I don't know, Trevor. I really don't know, but what are we going to do? About what? About you. Now about you! What the fuck are we going to do about you? If you had any balls, you'd stick a knife in a bastard to write all their bollocks. They're wankers. They're just like teachers at school. They're all fucking wankers. You learn anything at school, did you? Yeah. Be the best, otherwise forget it. That is? Everything they teach you at school is useless. Everything. It's rubbish in your head. Bugger all to do with me in my life. That's what you learned at school. Work hard. Do well. Get a job, otherwise you're no good. You're a vandal. That's what I learned. It's a lot of bollocks. Lies. We're all fucking great. You ain't taking bugger all from us. We hate you. You can lock me in here, but you can't take away the hate inside my head. I can still hate you in my head. You don't like that, do you? You can't take a bit of truth, can you? Oh, I don't think you're particularly truthful. Or honest. Now you lie with the best of them. You go out thieving, and that's not particularly honest. Perhaps school would be a better place if people like you were more honest, set an example. You really believe all that not nicking from school, not nicking from the local packy sweet shop bit, don't you? That's being honest, isn't it? Yes, it is. You don't really want me to be honest, do you? Yes, I do. Well then, honestly speaking, I don't think I can honestly keep the peace while I'm incarcerated in this shit house Or any other shit house, Contract or no contract. So there's no point in saying I will, is there? How's that for honesty? Yes, but where's it getting us, Trevor? It's not getting us out of this bloody room. See, you can't take it, can you? It's the same when I was at school. I said when I was bored, when I didn't want to do a lesson, when I wanted to have a fag, when I wanted to tell the teacher to fuck off for being a wanker. Or kick him in the teeth. But they couldn't take it. They didn't want me to be honest in that way. That's why they don't have lessons in honesty. Nine till ten thirty honesty. 
because I don't want the kids to say what they're really thinking and feeling inside their heads. If they had lessons like that, they'd lose control. Wouldn't be able to smack you around the head when they feel like it. You just want me to be honest when you take me down the neck. It's a fair cop, Garth. And when I feel out of form, be honest. Don't cheat. Don't carry a knife. Bend over, let me search you, make notes about you, keep files on you. If I'm honest, I've got nothing to worry about, have I? You're protecting me from the dishonest buggers, aren't you? But I can't look at the files. What's read out by the magistrate? What those fuckers said about me at school? What's on the police computer? It's all a lot of bollocks. We're not talking about honesty, we're talking about sticking to the rules. All those honest people out there are just sticking to the rules, but they lie and they fucking cheat all the way. And they just think they're being honest because they swallowed the bollocks they've been handed, they've been conned. But I've not been conned. That's why you can stick your hairy contract up your hairy ass. It's a dishonest con. You want to put me in line? Or do it? Try it. Don't fucking lie about it. Kick me in the bollocks if that's what you feel like doing. Because I'll do the same to you when I feel like it. So good night and fuck off to you. Well, good night to you too. That's it, Peter. I'm going. Uh, just, uh... just a minute, Barry. You forget it. He's a soddy psychotic. Have him transferred to a secure unit and let someone else deal with it. Okay, Parker. He dropped this one, so let's chuck it back at him. He said he has no intention of keeping the peace. Let's have him locked up. Give Parker a call. Do you really think it's worth it? This one opens my office. The small ones to top drawer in my desk in front of my dress book. Parker and the P. It's a waste of time. Yeah. the toilet. No, piss on the wall. Gonna have to send you to hatch me ass, you know. Secure unit under lock and key. Great. That's all you want. So I'm going anyway. Anything you care about? If I told you, you'd confiscate it. No one cares about your little protest, Trevor. No one gives a damn. It's totally insignificant to stew in this horrible room. Me? Right. Barry Gill and I may not be much, but all there is. No one else gives a son. Going banger racing tomorrow night. When you drag yourself along, you're into cars, take the social services for all they've got, eh? But then sitting around in this hole. Who wants to watch a bunch of wankers smashing up cars? Oh, me for one, I quite enjoy it. You're one of our lads entered. It's part of a project, uh, Leroy's. But he's a good driver. And a nigger. I'll go if I can drive. Yeah. Well, cut above cruising in a Ford Granada. Accessory. I'll go if I can drive. Keep the peace. If I can drive. Ah, it's not that easy. It takes weeks. Just a minute, just a minute. Think, think. We can get him to where. Uh... Yeah, why not? It's possible. OK, I'll fix it. But you stay away from four Granadas. It's a deal for everyone. No touching the dog's arse and keep your boot out of the chef's box. All right? He's out. Yeah, it doesn't matter, Barry. We're all going to bed now, aren't we, Trevor? Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Trevor! I don't have to 
do this, Trevor. I don't have to do it. Now, you let me down, no? I'll kill you. With Elvis. I'll get the chef and some of the biggest lads I can find, and Wankers United will bring you down here, and together, collectively, we'll duff you up. All right? Right. Professionals, you know. And there'll be all those other chaps, those other drivers, the professionals. Men twice your age. Isn't that right, Leroy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that last race, like the M1 in a fog. Hey, look at the time. Nah, lie in tomorrow. Hey, do you want some fish and chips, Leroy? No, no, thanks. I had a couple of dogs at the track. If you want to join the project, Trevor, I'll fix it. Bloody try, anyway. You're in now, aren't you, Leroy? Yep. Could race on a regular basis. Can't be back, can it? Join a team. Now, you wouldn't have to nick cars anymore. You get them for free. Well, I know they're free when you nick them, but that's not the point, no. Now, the police donate cars to the project. Stolen cars. They're yeah, not ones they've stolen. Unclaimed vehicles. Yeah, do you want any fish and chips, Trevor? It's funny, can't find me keys. Up there, lost them, dropped them. Now don't. Too late. Damn. Now we'll have Opa Hopkins on our necks. Deep a fucking tin, that motor just died on me. Mm. Now I've got a set of dupes somewhere. It's always best with keys. Oh, here we go. Hello, Ray. What's going on? Trevor and Leroy been in a project, Ray. Sorry to disturb you. I don't know about this. Get in, Trevor. Leroy. Nobody tells me a thing. Yeah, it's in the register, Ray. You should look. As far as I'm concerned, this door's locked at 10.30 p.m. I'm well aware of that.
Your case conference coming up, is it, eh? <laughs> what's, your lip, what's your fucking step? Get your hands off your cock. This one's got a little bit too much to say for himself, little fucker. Look what I got. What's your name? L. Other one, Pratt. Do pray. Do what? D U P R E Y. All these keys, who needs them, eh? Hey, where'd you get your name? Clive the wanker, he dropped them. Where? On the floor. Yeah, you little wanker. It's your father. What do you think these fuckers have ever said about you? For my case conference. Your fucking execution, mate. It's your school, look. Educational Welfare Officer's report. Confidential report to Juvenile Court. Subject, Errol Dupre. End of term clinic report. Head of year report. Record of school offences. Arguing with a teacher, disrupting assembly, kick football into Starface from close range. He kicked me. Racist remarks. Fucking hell. Damage calculator by taking it to pieces. Confidential referral form for admission to special unit. I don't know nothing about no special unit. Mark contract by Earl Dupre. Is this your writing? Yes, yeah, the contract. What do you write with, Emma? A pen. I have to behave myself at Hooper Street at all times. I must obey the staff and teachers at Hooper Street, and if I do go home, I must behave myself and listen to my mum. Obey the teachers, listen to your mum. I have to be up at eight every morning, and wash, and get dressed, and have my breakfast, and get ready for school, and reach there at five to nine every morning. Did you write this, cobblers? They make you do it. Signed by yours sincerely, Errol Dupre. Assessment report on Errol Dupre. Your case conference coming up, is it, eh? Can't you read? Not very well, no. You fucking baboon. Psychiatric report. The most striking feature about Errol that interview was his nine-inch cock. What? The future. It seems unlikely for this child to return home, his mother having rejected him for her own lifestyle. 
Bearing this in mind, future care seems to be the alternative. We would recommend a care order be made in order to be able to continue our assessment of his needs. You're in here for life, mate. What will I do? Piss on it. Fucking chuck it. Check the fucking lot of them. Oh, is yours? Who gives a fuck? Bottom's wrong. Piss on it. Shit on it. Fucking shit on it. Mr. Shanawankers. Fucking packy bastards! You packy shorts! You fucking old boss! You dark boss! You fucking bastards! You packy bastards! We don't want you here! Get out! Bring his wife! That nigga bastard! Fucking fucking go on!
Oi, oi. You up early, missus? What you looking at? Just a minute. Hey, excuse me. Shut it. Sorry about that, Mr. Driver. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, John. I thought it was a taxi for the airport. I'm sorry. You nerd. You going away, Harry? In there. And keep your voice down. You going on all the Harry? What do you want, Trevor? What's going on? I'm turning myself in. Harry? What do you mean? Harry? Wait there, and don't make a noise. Leads out. You wake him up and I'm gonna boot your ass. I didn't get to bed till one and I'm up again at six, so I've had bugger all sleep, so watch it, right? Now what's going on? I'd have bust up with those wankers you put me with. Well, you put yourself, Trevor, not me. I kept you out of there for bloody months. You're pissing off on your holidays. If you can't keep straight for two weeks in a year, you're not worth a toss. Now, when did you bunk off? About one. Tonight? Yeah. Right, and take my advice and bunk back in before it's too late. I'll bust the job centre window. What? When? Friday. But I only took you in there Thursday. I don't know, I did it. The assessment centre? Yeah. That you're telling me? Yeah. Great. Is it time yet, Dad? No, you're not yet, Terry. I'll tell you when it's time to go. Hello, Tell. Back to bed, I'm working. Hmm. I'll nick the transit from the centre. When? Tonight. What else? Me and Errol chuck bricks through Mr. Shanawanker's window. Bev. All right. Mr. Roo, whose windows? That packy bastard who had me put away. What about Arrow's windows? You do them too? I didn't think of that. Whose? Who's Errol? A nignog from the centre. I dumped him in the transit at the police station. I turned him in. Is that all? Yeah. Ah, oh, no. I pissed on my files in the centre. Errol, shit on his. I'm turning myself into you, Harry, as you're my mate. You can collect the reward. Where did you leave Errol in the transit? What police station? One near Bradley Street School. Crapping on your own doorstep. Well, let them deal with it. They stand on me, Harry. They don't like me there. I've been there before. They'll roll me in a mattress and they'll boot me. What's that to a brick shit house like you? I smashed a police car with the transit. Send me to another nick. Your shit. You roll in it.
You're an arsehole, Trevor. You're not worth a piss. Right. Like my file. Take your finger off that bleeding buzzer. What do you want? Can you flush the toilet? I've done a crap. I told you to keep your hand off that buzzer. I'm a juvenile offender. You can't keep me in a cell. I oh, know you. Do ya? I've been charged now. You can't keep me in a cell. You've got to send me back to the assessment centre. Shut your mouth, will you? Just shut it. You've got to look after me. Give me something to eat. You see this? Sit down and shut your fucking rabbit. PC Anson. Shut it. You're straight into court Monday. And you ain't going back to no assessment centre. You're going straight to a detention centre. Or Borstal. And when you come out, we are going to be waiting outside the gate for you and we're going to put you in a car and we're going to bring you straight back down here. And we're going to take your fingerprints. We can't do that now, juvenile offender. But once you've been to a DC or Borstal, we can screw you and we will. We got you now. And once we got your fingerprints, we're going to do you for every unsolved taking and driving away in this district, stretching back over months, and that's a lot of cars, I can tell you. And you'll go down and you'll stay down for years. We'll see you there. Sounds great. You think you're hard, don't you? A lot of verbals. There's two things you're going to learn. At home, at school, at work, in the street, you will respect authority and you will obey the rules, just like everybody else. That's discipline. Most kids know that by the time they reach your age. Shut it and keep it shut.
Let's go, baby!